The father looked at the young boy from afar. Though not born of him, this boy was supposed to be his son, but he was separated. As the, boy, as the boy grew older, the father followed him and watched him. The boy was looking for something. He began to get involved in many different things. The father e eagerly followed after the boy, careful to see what the boy would, would do next. The boy continued to look. Unable to find anything, he brought all he had to offer, everything precious that he had. He poured his heart out to the world, but the world trampled on it. He was mocked and laughed at, despised and rejected. The boy was empty and convinced he had nothing to offer. He had been blackened and disfigured. The boy grew into a young man, a beautiful young man even by the world standards. A young man with a deep wound, with a hurt and an anger and a fear inside. Rejection and mockery and shame and guilt and fear and anger abused his soul and turned it against other human beings. He was numb and found small pleasures and occupation in other things. A job, a family, he would even get together with his family and his regular dad every year at Thanksgiving. But the world that abused him was now using him, and the boy could not see through his hurt and his numbness. The father's heart burned for the boy. He grieved and cried at the things that had been done to him, for he had been there and seen them all. He had never abandoned the boy. The father was also a fierce warrior and fiercely hated the things that was hurting the boy and using him. It was the same thing that had separated the boy. The father had a real son, born of himself. The father loved this son very much, and the son loved his father. But the father was still separated from the boy, so the father sent his only son out from his home and into the world to save the boy, although he knew the world was going to kill his son, just as it would one day kill the boy. Because the son loved the father, the son went, though he knew what would become of him. He was tortured and killed and mocked and abused and put to shame and found guilty, although he offered everything he had and everything that was precious. As he died, he cried out, My father, why have you forsaken me? The father remained silent and let him die, because in order to rescue the boy, he had to give up his son. The father was a fierce warrior, and he made a promise that was his word, that was like a sword. The father had one messenger. He gave his sword to his messenger and sent him to the world with his promise, the sword. His promise was this, I have brought my son back to life. I have made him king, and he sits beside me on the throne now. His blood from the earth cries out to me for justice. Therefore, I will grant mercy to all those who cry upon his name as his blood cries to me, and both will be the cry for mercy and for justice. For as I raised him to life, and as he lives with me, so will I raise you to life, and so will you live with me if you cry upon his name. Anyone who cries out to my son cries out with the same cry as his blood and takes it as his own. Therefore, justice and life shall come to those who cry out to my son. The messenger went forth into all the world this time with the sword of the Father's word, and could not be killed. For the sword was the word of the Father, and the Son died and became king, so that the word could come to pass, so that death could be defeated and the thing that separates taken down. Many in the world could not receive the messenger, or did not want rescue, and so did not believe his word, although they all would need the sword on the day death would come for them. But when the messenger came to the boy with the word of the king's blood and the Father's promise, he believed it and received the word, and cried out to the Son, the king, with thanks for his blood. Instantly the sword pierced through the thing that separated the boy from the father so they could begin a relationship. So they began one, for now the boy was able to come to his father. And when the boy died, he too was raised to life so he could join with the father and the real son in the father's house. And when the boy got there, the father gave him a new name and adopted him as his own son and gave him the full rights that his own son had. And so now the king was the first of many brothers to come. For there were other hurt boys and girls who did not want rescue and who were also desperate enough to, to trust the love of a father and a, a king they had never seen. For when they heard the messenger's word, they recognized it as the truth and put their faith in it and held on to the promise until they died and were taken up to the father and their king. The boy, like his future brothers and sisters, battled through many hardships while still on earth, as all people do, but held on to the promise and wielded it like a sword against every lie and doubt that came to them. The boy realized that from the beginning the father had given him many gifts to use to serve his father and other people while still on earth and to tell others of the father's love. So the boy developed and used his gifts. And so he learned that he did have something to offer. It can only be used once activated by the one who gave it to him. And so he persevered until the day he died and received life. As for the father's enemy, it had been defeated. And it and the world and all who were left behind without a sword to fend off the enemy were defeated and cut down and lost forever. 
and the king and the father together with his sons and daughters dwelled forever in victory in their father's house. When the boy died and was brought to the father's house, his, his wound was entirely healed, for he now encountered his father's love face to face in all of its power and depth and height and width. He had heard the word of the father's love when he was still on earth, but could not comprehend it until now. Now, having met the father, the boy realized what he had been looking for from the beginning. He was looking for his father. He was simply looking to be found. And that's it. <laughs>